right, round four of Swiss. Up next, my name is Justin, also known as Shit Just Works, and today we have some IQ qualifier number three footage coming in hot. If you guys haven't been here before, welcome to the channel. Definitely hit that subscribe button if you enjoy Legends of Rune Terror competitive content and just Rune Terror content in general. We got new cards coming out, new tournaments, new decks, all sorts of stuff. Hit the sub button. Without further ado, we got round four. We're gonna get Zada versus Sal Krista. You handle English, I'll do the math, all right? <laughs> yeah. Perfect team, baby, perfect yeah. team. T together we make one caster. Uh, our powers combined, <laughs> we can make all one right. caster. Listen, listen, all right, please say, you watched Captain Planet when you were younger. Though. Yeah, he's my, he's a hero. All right. Come on. All right, good. That's my boy right there, Captain Planet. Everybody recycle. Heart, so. baby. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. So, but we are at the beginning of the next game that we're about to hop into, if you do want to go ahead and hop on over. Yeah, Zada um, versus so Sui Cristo. Yeah, and it looks like we have discard aggro versus all right. Is this spider aggro? Is this this is spider? Ooh. It's well, kind of spider. It's got a lease in it, <laughs> so it's it's spider aggro. But um, wow, this is interesting. So this is we were talking about fearsome decks earlier, and this is definitely a uh, as as much of a fearsome deck as we've seen as of late. Uh, we do have. Uh, three Iron Ballista kind of at the top of the curve there as well to provide that little extra oomph towards the end of the game. But lots of Fearsome Units, three Stygian, three Precious Pet, uh, three Frenzied Skitterer as well, and then uh, otherwise the normal burn package that you typically see. Yep, yeah, we, we, we did say there's a lot of aggro decks popping up to fight these Lee Sins, and we'll get an aggro match that you don't see too often. Discard aggro and spider aggro, those are relics from the beta, SJW. Yeah. Relics, dude. Wow, yeah. I mean, now that you put it that way, even Elise kind of just fell off the map in regards to her being played. I mean, she was played in Karina Control uh, a ways back as well, and now she's basically in nothing. Uh, but on the side of uh, Christo as well, actually bringing two aggro decks because he is also playing discard ag aggro, Draven Jinx. And then for the third deck, uh, we do have mid range Frostbite, which we've seen pop up a lot today as well. But uh, for now, anyways, we have uh, Christo. Sorry, Christo playing. I, I'm, I'm confusing the deck. So Zada is playing the mid range Frostbite as well as the discard aggro. Christo is playing discard aggro. And then also Misfortune Sejuani and Garen Harrowing. Yeah. So I love both of these players' lineups. God, am I happy that we're in this Yeah, the right Garening. This is, this is going to be a spicy, spicy <laughs> match here. So hopefully, hopefully the Garen deck wasn't uh, wasn't banned. I, I do want to see that. So that should be interesting. Yeah. We'll see what aggro deck is able to get the better of the other here in this first first game. Yeah, even I wouldn't be upset with seeing uh, Misfortune Sejuani as well. You, you don't see that. Yeah. That deck's really fallen out of favor in uh, recent times. People often yeah, we get obnoxious. A, but here we go. Mo monkey business popping back up in the Misfortune Sejuani as well. So starting with a rummage, uh, getting the flame choppers out, and man, flame choppers. Ever since like a lot of the changes to a lot of the discard uh, card effects for discard aggro, flame choppers is good. Like I remember when the game first came out, and people were like, "Flame choppers, like yeah, I get it. You can discard it and summon it, but like, is this thing even good?" And yeah, it's actually pretty good now. It's it's pretty valuable to be able to pull that unit all the way to the right, something that might have life steal or something that's just a big beefy blocker to allow some of your other units to be able to push through that damage. Yeah, and specifically on this board, you see it next to the arena champion. Being able to get that one power <laughs> can clear out one of these spiders that would normally chump block this jinx. So, so do you pull the precious pet here or do you try to go for the value and kill one of these spiderlings? Well... I probably would take the value here because um, you're going to need to connect with this Jinx at least once, to, I think, to be able to close. But then again, uh, the counterattack is something that you need to also worry about. We see get excited going face, not looking to take out a, uh, one of the units. So, yeah, this is looking pretty good because we'll see the whole board trade Jinx stand alone against a spider, which cannot stand up against the rocket potentially next turn. And Zada doesn't have much removal for a four toughness unit either, other than just trying to pressure it yeah. into blocking to to finish it off with a smaller removal. 
Well, yeah, and I think Christo is uh, doing really well to recognize here that Jinx is the advantage uh, right now anyways in this matchup versus Zada. If Zada does find multiple points of removal, like a Fervor and a Vile Feast, then that's going to you know feel pretty bad. But that's still a lot of tools invested just to kill this Jinx. And now Christo is going to have refuel that Zada doesn't necessarily have access to. We do see the Stalking Shadows, which is a good start as far as refuel is concerned. But this Jinx almost certainly is going to trump any refuel that Zada yeah. comes down with, especially once we start getting these uh, big old rockets on board. Yeah, the card advantage gained from the rockets as well as just drawing two a turn. I mean, you do see this turn keeping up with the Stalking Shadows, but that was a two-mana investment. So mm -hmm. just the free two cards every turn, also taxing a unit every turn because – you can't imagine Zada wants to take a lump for six from this Jinx ever. So, and mm -hmm. it's going to become even harder to block as we see another Flame Chopper is discarded. Ooh, this is uh, this is dangerous though. So, Christo opting to not block with that Jinx there, preserving the life total on the Jinx to make sure it lives, so it can't be picked off with something like Noxine Fervor. But Christo now at eight health and versus a deck that like Zada's playing. 8 health is very, very dangerous, especially if I wasn't paying attention to the hand, but if that Doom Beast was one of the Doom Beasts off of Stalking Shadows, that might prove to be a problem uh, for Christo. Yeah, it's going to be a racing situation here. I don't think he can take any more combat damage. Christo, I think Christo oh, no. knows this. Does, does have a good attack here with the Flame Charmers could pull out a blocker and with a rocket as well this turn, because a rocket can be produced. This is going to be yeah. a big attack. It was a Doom Beast. Yep. Oh, the Stalking yeah. Shadows. I will say, these draws off the top with Jinx... Oh, wow. Wow. These that draws off the top one. with Jinx have been perfect. Holy crap. Oh, yeah. You draw two of them. And one could be good, and one could be something that... One could be bad, and one could be something that could be discarded to something good. Like we see here, <laughs> Jinx is getting excited. Wow, this skitter though is really going to wow. punish this development. Wow, the the plays in this aggro matchup right now, these top decks, Jesus. That's good. And actually, wow, so actually opting to get rid of an additional blocker here with the get excited instead of going face. Um, I do I guess I like this. I mean, there is only at the end of the day going to be two blockers for a pretty wide attack field on the side of Christo and you are pulling two of them with the flame choppers. Um, one of which is ephemeral, so it's pretty pretty good that you're able to pull it with the flame choppers right here. And shout out real quick to uh, Five O in chat too. Um, that's 100 percent right. So anybody who's following the competitive scene, if you saw Fight Night last night, Swim did uh, take the win there and was playing a discard aggro deck, and maybe that's why we're starting to see discard aggro even more so today after his performance yesterday in Fight Night. And he was not the only one playing discard aggro. Uh, There's a lot of people playing discard aggro, and not only that, playing three aggro deck lineups. So uh, not surprised at all to see more discard aggro today. And we see another great draw off this Jinx. The rummage allows Christo to get a burst speed rocket. That's going to be lethal, even through a Vile Feast. We'll see. If there's a double fervor here, though, that could be interact. But picking up another, get excited as well. This is lethal both ways. Wow. I think uh, Sui Christo is over there saying Katy Perry firework after all those rides. <laughs> what you think? Uh, I got to agree with you there. That's, uh, man, Super Mega Death Rocket is just one of the best feel good cards in Legends of Runeterra. Like, you just love getting free one mana, four damage to face, one damage AoE. Like, any card game ever made, that's just a damn good card and a really fun card. Oh yeah, I love the Jinx rocket for sure. Oh, we get it. We, look, yes, we get what you wanted. You hey called it. You called it. So I thought it wasn't gonna happen. But <laughs> we, oh, thanks. We are, <laughs> we, <Damn> <laughs> but we are gonna get to see this uh, Bannerman uh, Garen uh, harrowing. Garening? Is there? Yeah, let's. We'll go with Garening. We'll go with Garening. I like that. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I can dig if it. If there was Darrowing, then there's Garroning. So we're just gonna we're just gonna make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> if we say it oh, enough, man. people will start saying it too. I, yeah, it, it, Garroning. <laughs> I like it. Garroning. All right. This deck plays two Harrowings to close. It has two Ruination. Uh, triple Battlesmith. Can we can we talk about the for the fallen in the hand? <laughs> oh, I love this deck. This is gonna be great. I just if I I already. 
if I'm able to end this day casting and we see a for the fallen cast, I it was a successful day. All right, Nola, this was this was a successful day. <laughs> this card, uh, another card on the list of very uh, underplayed cards, but also just not the greatest of cards. I think elites have has always been an archetype, but not an archetype that people really have much faith in. Yeah, I think it's probably at its best as we see it here. If you wanted to yeah. see it work, it would be here with the double. What's the name of that two one? It doesn't see much play. The challenger. Oh Jesus! Um, the uh, Silver Wing Vanguard. Yeah, there you go. So the hey. Vanguard is great because it gives you two elites to go towards for the fallen, and you can set up. Uh, we'll, wouldn't be surprised if Chris to try and set up a turn where he has two of these in play, sends it all, eats the whole board, and then gets the full for the fallen. That turn could be turn five here. I wouldn't be surprised to see it be turn five here. If you could go Vanguard into Vanguard into attack out and everything into for the fallen that that's gonna make for a very big board and probably shut down all of yeah. his combat damage for the rest of the game how is he gonna navigate this turn though yeah it looks like we are what i will say is elites they do have like elites inherently just want to like throw stuff on the field and they don't even care they just throw attack summon attack summon attack and with that said, they have a lot of ways to kind of refuel. You know, we we see already on board Vanguard Sergeant. Uh, it doesn't necessarily refuel, but it does give you more cards. Vanguard Redeemer does refuel. It gives you more units from your deck. And then now For the Fallen uh, basically just resummons an entire field. But the thing with For the Fallen, which is why I think it's very iffy, um, I actually just had to reread it too just to make sure I had this correct. But you do... it. You, you can only get value out of it if allies die that round. Right. So it's only good if you already had an established field, and then it basically just reestablishes the field. So if somebody plays like a Ruination, yeah. you can play this in response, and it's like it it's never good. happened. And Yeah, paired, paired best probably with these challenges on this turn. This is the, the yeah. best you're going to see of this for the Fallen card. Like you said, the units have to die. These challengers are going to trade off. This 3-1 is probably going to get traded with as well. I mean, it, it, the Spider is blocking a 3-1, right? Yeah. And then we'll we'll see it come up with three, three threes for free. That's... And the, the the thing too is like for the fall, you can't play around for the fallen. Like you you have to block stuff. Like you can't just take the damage versus a Demacia deck and expect you to be okay. But Zada though, very quietly has Christo down to seven health. So uh, I don't know if Christo is actually going to live long enough to even be able to get any value out of these three three threes. Yeah. <laughs> Can get another one damage out of this open attack. That would put him in double fervor range. We see Stalking Shadows. I mean, if Stalking Shadows finds a Doom Beast here, that's down to three. That's fervor range automatic right there. So we'll see. I will say maybe this is kind of this Demacia deck's uh, like big weakness, right? There's no really. It's it's kind of like mid range frostbite where there's no way to heal. Um, right. So. Its weakness is going to be against something like this in burn, where right now Crystal's at six health. That's that's sticking. I mean, there's there's no way I, that I can see anyways that Crystal nope. act, cr that gets back up to anything that's actually going to make him live. And honestly, yeah, this Doom Beast too. I don't see any way Zada doesn't draw four damage at some point. Right. It's going to be about closing, and it looks like he's going to need at least two combat steps. Uh, one thing to note: whenever you go Garroning instead of the regular Elite deck, you don't you don't see any. Relentless Pursuits. That looks like to cut for these Shadow Isles over the top cards, which is pretty important in a race like this whenever you have to close in combat, especially against a burn deck. So, going to be tough well, to do I, Wall of Spiders here. I don't mind that, actually, now that you mention that. That's a good point, because that means, to me, that shows me that Crystal's kind of doubling down and saying, okay, my aggro matchup is already crap anyways, so let's just get rid of the Relentless Pursuit and let's just focus on doing what we do best, which is making big boards, and every time we do have the attack token, swinging big. And, uh, you know, we're going to see that if we do get a Harrowing to, to go off here, we're going to see that. And obviously, you do get the rally from something like a Garen as well, but uh, Demacia, or sorry, Decimate, I just called Decimate Demacia. That's <laughs> I got elites going all through my well, head, right? Yeah. Decimate, going to close out the game. <laughs> Easy to tunnel vision. There was a lot of Demacia on that board, but it could not stop the Decimate. At four, no healing. Sweet deck, though. You did see the four, the fallen come off. At least we got that out of it. Um, we can see it one more time, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Still has to try and get a win with the deck. Let's go. All right. We saw the spider aggro. It. We saw the spider aggro twice. I don't know what the last ban was. We'll see. Looks like yeah, we're gonna take a quick break. Yeah, it's either gonna be 
uh, discard aggro or Ashla Juwani. I have to imagine, especially watching that game, if this deck has, if the, the Garroning deck, uh, as we've dubbed it, if it has that much of a bad matchup versus aggro, you got to think that discard aggro was banned on the side of Christo. Um, yeah. And that we're going to see mid range frostbite. Because I, and if it's mid range frostbite, I don't know. I mean, obviously the, the frostbite effects, I think, are going to help a lot in a lot of those, uh, you know, uh, uh, combat trades, you know, with the Demacia units. But stuff like For the Fallen might just be enough to just replenish your entire field and basically null and void those frostbites. Like, okay, sure, kill my unit, but now I have five more. Yeah, and also like a good spell to play behind a Reckoning, which is the big advantage generally from an Ash Sejuani deck against a mid-range Demacia deck is the Reckoning the whole board away. And being able to refill with the For the Fallen, it could be a key card in the match. Not to mention something like a Harrowing. Traditionally, Ash Sejuani has trouble with Harrowing decks. Like outside of a harsh winds to maybe survive, so yep. that's two big edge cards that could turn what would normally be uh, a tougher matchup against a reckoning uh, freeze deck into um, possible favorite. I mean, uh, if if you stay in the game long enough, mm -hmm. and then you also have a lot of refill as opposed to a lot of Demacia decks. Yeah, what am I talking about? I'm talking to like the the harrowing master over here with uh, zombie. Zombie Ash, uh, you know, piloting it in basically every large tournament there is. I, have you have you p played Harrowing outside of Zombie Ash at, at any tournaments? Yeah, I've, I've not in any tournaments. No, I, maybe one. No. I, when Brom and Anivia were in their heyday, I did play Harrowing oh. in that deck. So oh, I probably played it in that deck. Good old Bald Eagle, huh? The Bald Eagle, man. I think I might have done it Fourth of July weekend, you know, for the flavor. <laughs> okay, I see what you did there. <laughs> So. nice nice i like to see it <laughs> so but, but i am i am happy that we are seeing this version of the elise that like i think personally i think that going all in on the fearsome units is the way to go with elise which you know we don't see anything like brothers bond or any of those uh you know more combat tricky type things with this elise deck that we saw um i mean it was able to pick up uh actually yeah i was able to pick up a win so uh we'll see what ends up happening here in game three, where you should see this Garroning deck again. Um, I imagine just taking a quick bathroom break. So. Yeah. yeah if you get this deck's 3-0. Oh. Let's, let's not forget, too. Anybody watching? Both of these both of these players yeah, are 3-0. Both of these players, yeah. These lineups are great. Uh, double aggro and Ash Sejuani, and then you see double aggro. Was it double aggro? Yeah. No, well, you missed Fortune Sejuani. I'd consider that to be an aggressive deck. There's a lot of one, of, of one drops and... I guess it's more mid range, but so I, so I was just gonna say, is that aggro or mid range now? I would say I'd say right. it's an aggressively slanted mid range deck. It has a, a lot of aggressive draws. I mean, you play three warning shots like the turn one butcher can turn that into an aggro deck quick. Not to mention uh, the misfortune as well. So yep. it's definitely a mid range deck, but very aggressively slanted. So that I do paired with the uh, this is the, obviously a mid range deck. The the one you see on the screen here, the Garen. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The Garroning, but uh, yeah, the, the just opting two two pretty aggressively slanted decks, uh, and then a, a solid mid range deck. I don't think that uh, I wonder this deck probably doesn't do that well against Lee Sen. It could maybe go wide, right? And uh, like Silver Wing Vanguard. Um, huh, I wonder what that has to be like because obviously deny you can't really count on Harrowing and Ruination against a deny mm. deck. But uh, I wonder how it keeps up on board early against Lee Sin. It probably has a good time with it. I Looks think. like we are getting back in. All right, and let's get back to the game. I think Lee Sin, it's, it's pretty much like if it's able to go wide, it'll win. But it's probably got a really small window to actually do that, like maybe by turn six or seven. Otherwise, I think the Lee Sin deck just takes it. Um I don't know. It would be interesting to see this because it's not every day we see this Garrett and Garrett, yeah, right? So I, I, mean, have, I have no idea what these matchups look like. I'm waiting on the cast <laughs> to be over with so I can fire it up yeah. on the ladder myself. <laughs> <laughs> Things you Ooh, just two. have to know. Kept double Bannerman in the opener? Is yeah, that two Bannerman. And two cards to curve into it. We do have a Sithri. Uh, oh, God. I always forget this uh, this tough elite's name. Uh, uh, Vanguard, Vanguard Defender. Vanguard Defender, yeah. There we go. And uh, again, another card with Vanguard Defender. You know, when that when this game first came out, I saw a two two with Tough, and I'm like, eh, there's better. Right. And now that things have kind of 
panned out, you know, over a couple sets now with Call of the Mountain and everything coming out. Tough is such a good keyword. Uh, that is really a great two drop, and especially a deck like this. You know, you have that tough keyword there. It's going to be very hard to remove. And, you know, if you are playing against a control deck that has something like Avalanche, that's going to stick to the board, which is exactly what yeah. Demacia wants to do. Wow. Yeah, and then also John. against the many Make It Rains and Twisted Face in the format. <laughs> it, it usually lives around till Bannerman shows up, and then it's even harder to remove after that. So, Yeah, and that's the ultimate goal early, right? You want to get the... And, and honestly, I mean, Christo drawing into this Vanguard Sergeant now, just the, the dreamlike curve here. Not only that, drawing two Bannermans. So we are looking to have a pretty damn big board going into turn four. And not only that, Christo has the attack token on turn four. So this should be this should be a big attack. This definitely puts Christo in the driver's seat to, to potentially win this game. Yeah, some, some treasure comes down and dumps out an extra blocker if needed. Don't really expect Draven to get a block in here, but at least you can trade with the 4-4, make this board a little smaller. Nope. Gonna block. That recognizes that against these Demacia decks, you really want to keep their board small because of cards like Bannerman. There are open deck lists, so there's no Genevieve to be worried about, but maybe wants wants to um Draven, it, it just seems like Draven's better on, on attack, and it's very hard to block with a Draven and have it yeah. survive so you think you want to keep it on attack but recognizing that making the trade is important and that that is going to decrease the power of the bannerman as the board gets narrower and i interesting that we're actually even seeing this game too because before this game i mentioned that the discard aggro could have possibly been the one banned because it seemed like christo had a really bad matchup versus that aggro deck that we just saw but uh, opting to ban the mid-range Frostbite instead. So I am curious to see if Christo does well with this matchup. And if it does do well, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to think of what some of the core differences are between the Elise aggro that we just saw and this discard yeah. aggro. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I, probably the fact that there's Decimate and Noxion Fervor, where this yeah. deck, if, if you can get on board with the Demacia deck, which is not hard to do, outside of... I don't know what Jinx Rocket. The 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 close of potential outside of combat is is not as big mm -hmm. as the Elise deck. I think that's probably what uh, Krista was thinking. Yeah, I, I agree. I think this is more combat oriented, where it's trying to get some damage like this. And uh, I do like holding back the Silver Wing as well from blocking the the one two. Well, now it's one two Flame Choppers. Yeah. It was a O two, but. Obviously, knowing that the spinning axe could buff it up there and kill the silver wing, gonna take more damage because of it. But I, I think I think Crystal's still in a good spot. I don't think uh, with you know only four cards and three of them on Zada's field are literally represent basically nothing. Um, I think Crystal is still in a really good spot to go ahead and take this. Maybe on this? No, probably not on this attack turn. He needs what? He needs to survive until his next attack token. I think he'll be able to take this home. Wow, and you see this experiment aug uh, augment expeditor. What's that card called? I know uh, one augmented. Augment. <laughs> I know there's uh, augment and experiment. Augmented experimenter. There you go. The there uh, go. that's a big play right here. Refill on Zada. That card when it, yeah. when I see that card come down, it's really nasty sometimes. Yeah, it's. I mean, draw three. Right, we were just talking about how, like crazy draw like that with Trifarian Assessor. This is PNZ's equivalent to Trifarian Assessor, I guess, just uh, a little bit more RNG based, right? And it's so crazy in this deck. I mean, it, it did exactly what it needs to do here, which is it looked like Zada was out of the game. This got Zada right back into the game and in a situation where Zada just needs to top deck something to deal burn damage and could now potentially take this one from Christo. And that's yeah, exactly what he see top it, the decked. Missing shot into the get excited. Another get excited or a missing shot can close this. Opting for the Mystic Shot, too, because I've uh, we were just talking earlier how there actually is a decent amount of discard aggro that's not even playing Mystic Shot lately. Um, doesn't seem to be seeing as much play, but wow, get excited, too. Just yeah. drawing the nuts there. Zada taking it from Christo with that crazy Augmented Experimenter. Really turned the tide on that game because Bannerman into Bannerman was going to close that game very quickly. And even had, like, a Ruination... In case things got hairy with the Jinx uh, potential, but uh, I mean the game was going to close quick, so that that change taking out the five three and produ pr producing another three three blocker. It's like we talked about Trafarian Assessor <laughs> earlier. 
the uh, I guess we'll look for another match too while we're talking about it. But yeah, the the Trafarian Assessor, how you, you draw two, you ask when is it broken? I'm like, well, if you draw two and you made a body, if that trades with something, that's like three for one. But you look at that augmented experimenter comes down, you get the three three body, which it could it was threatening to trade with anything on the board at that point, as well as drawing three cards because it was played with no cards in hand. That's huge, and it killed a unit. That's like five for one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean, <laughs> well, yeah, that. We could put that in broken category, I think, at that point. Yeah, no, when it's in a deck like that, when it's in a deck like Discard Aggro, yeah, it's crazy. That card literally will just win the game sometimes. Just like Jinx, right? Jinx feels broken at Discard Aggro. The, the problem with Jinx is you can really actually only play it. In, like, that's the only deck Jinx is good at, right? So, yeah. all right, round four in the book. Zada taking it home versus Sal Cristo. If anybody wants to correct me on how to pronounce the first part of Cristo's name, go for it because... We were trying to figure that out, not gonna lie. So if you guys can help me out, props to you. But as always, everybody stay healthy, stay positive. I hope shit just works for you and peace out.